Low budget filmmaking is what we see in developing countries and it's very important for us to know how to manage resources. My name is Dennis Ijogu and I'm a producer, scriptwriter, director and a voiceover artist and I'll be sharing with you tips on how to achieve successful low budget filmmaking. One of the most important things you should realize is that you need to have professionals come on board when you're trying to inter interpret a script that has to do with areas that is beyond your knowledge or your expertise. Um, if you're going to talk about medical descriptions, follow the line of medical professions because and some maybe um, some problems some people have had in that area, then you have to get a medical personnel to be able to interpret the scene itself during the movie. You can't just have um, you interpret the scene from your own idea. So if, if you have the professionals come on board, they'll be able to help you out and be able to interpret how these things really should be. Uh, in the area of security, you should actually have uh, people who are involved with security, you know, consultants, specialists to interpret, interpret some of these uh, scenes if you have a scene that has that's connected to uh, security and safety and all that. So the professionals, uh, they should advise you on the script and how to interpret it and also they should be on set. Um, if you have somebody who is in the area of fire, the, the fire fighter or the consultant should be there to help you to interpret the script and also advise you how to carry out the scene itself, how to shoot the scene. Um, it, these are very delicate areas, these are very sensitive areas you should have. You should have professionals to come on board and help you to interpret those scenes. Not just to interpret the scenes, also the professionals should be there on sets in case something goes wrong. Um, if you have a, a scene that has to do with um, fire, you know, setting something on fire, there should be professionals who will be there to help you ensure that uh, it's within the safety uh, um, limits uh, of what should be done. Uh, if you have uh, setting a car on fire, for instance, you need to find out exactly what the, the radius of explosion and all that. So it, it, for, for, this, for the safety of yourself, your crew and the people on, 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 on the set, and sometimes the onlookers you know, who are there probably gathered there to, to watch what's going on, you should have a professional. God forbid if something goes wrong, there should be a professional who will be able to defend your action and be able to say that, okay, this thing we're put in place and so it shouldn't happen. You know? So that is very key. And also in cases where you're going to shoot around water, of course, there should be a lifeguard around that would help in case something goes wrong. Uh, it's important to put these things in place because the worst thing you want to do as a director is in trying to interpret a scene or a script, you actually uh, end up um, harming someone, your crew, or possibly it will lead to something more fatal than that. So you need to put these things in place. Get the professionals to interpret the script and also the professionals, some key professionals, when it has to do with safety and security, uh, has to do with danger, they should be on the set to interpret the script. Very, very important. Another angle is to find out exactly from your actors um, what they're comfortable with, um, to know what, what works for them. Um, in the issue of a script, yes, if this is a, these are one of the very tough areas that we deal with as directors. Um, some actors would want to interpret the script from their own perspective. I think it happens as well in Hollywood, but the privilege is given to a few known actors, but for in Nigeria, uh, yes, you can have some people who, who will tell you, oh, I, I think I should say it like this better. Um, this is what the line says, but I think I'm going to say it like this. Now, as, as a director, depending on the affluence, the social affluence of the actor, and in, 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 uh, in relative to the marketing of the content itself, there's some things you can actually, you know, decide to overlook and allow him to do what, or she to do what she wants to do. But however, it has to be the same for different angles. If they're going to change the script, then the person should remember the scripts, the lines for the different angles to be shot. And it should be relevant to what the corresponding actors uh, need from them. If the response or if the lines that are, to, that are to be changed is not following the script, the scene, and what the mood is, then you shouldn't take it as a director because that means you're shifting from the project itself. So um, some actors you know, prefer to uh, say what they want to say, and uh, but please, if you're going to give them that privilege, you should be very, very, um, they should be able to repeat it because you don't want to give the editor um, a problem in, at the end. And um, so, but if the person is not really so much of, um, of a heavyweight in the industry, 
please put your foot down and ensure that they follow the lines, except it makes sense. There are cases where you can actually um, make provisions for options and say, okay, um, you know, let, let's see how it goes. But like I said, make sure they follow. If they're going to change, if there's going to be any change in the script, the lines of the script, it has to uh, follow the different angles because, you know, scenes are shot from different angles and all that. So it has to follow that, that, um, that perspective. Speaking of stunts, it's important for you to speak to the stuntsmen. Find out how they're going to carry out the role. Um, if they'll need help, uh, what sort of help. So you'll be able to understand the angles with your cinematographer, uh, the, 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 the sound available, um, um, the sound effect available. It, it's very, very important to, to do that. If you don't do that, you don't want a case where on the day of um, they are going to shoot, you find out that somewhere along the line, some things are not just making sense. <laughs> so, as a low budget film director, you need to have a word. You need to also, during the production meeting, to say, okay, this is how they plan to do X, Y, Z. What's the best way for them to achieve this? So, the cinematographer will tell you, the, the audio guy will tell you, and some other the special you know, effects guy will tell you, this is how we're going to achieve this and all that. Now, let's talk about blocking scenes. Blocking scenes is when you have a rehearsal of what. Um, that is before you start shooting, if you're, you know, everything is in place. But before you start shooting, you have all the actors in that scene come in and be able to do exactly what they plan to do according to what you want them to do, but looking at the script itself. So you have a trajectory of one actor is going to move from one point of the room to the other, and you have another person coming in, you have two or three actors. So it's just to rehearse your movement. The whole essence of blocking. The scene is uh, the scenes are to 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 give the cameraman, the audio man, an idea of how they're going to place themselves in the room, and also the the, the lighting man, because light is one major major problem we have um, in terms of low budget film directing. You might not have enough cash on you to get the light. So, but there are people who are very experienced and can work with as min with, with minimal lights. And also, uh, my own advice is as a low budget film director, get a camera that is um, light friendly. I don't want to mention brands, but there's a particular brand I use, and I think the ISA is great. It can work under um, quite uh, low light and still give you good production in the end. So have that in mind as a low budget film director. When you're talking to your producer, ensure that you have an idea of the kind of equipment they have. Um, so, cause you don't want to, I don't want to mention brands. Yeah, there's some cameras that need a lot of light. So if you're a low budget film director and you, you come up on, on set and realize that this you have a camera that needs so much light, then it becomes a big problem for you. So that is very important. And so back to what we're saying, so you have the rehearsals of the scenes and the rest of them. So as to know how this thing should be placed, audio, camera movement, lights, most, you know, most importantly. So you have, um, you do it a couple of times, so everybody understands how it should be before you do the actual shooting. Now, when you do the actual shooting, one thing you need to understand is, is to review your shots. Oftentimes, don't just take things for granted and say, ah, oh, that's Look at the details, because you don't want to give the editor stress in the end, because the editor post-production, there's some things that he might not be able to change. It's so you ensure that the, the job is properly done, uh, so that post-production will not give you stress. In terms of audio, for a low-budget film director, the question you may ask is, how do I achieve good audio? If I don't have enough money, if the producer did not give me enough money, um, did not make uh, good equipment available on set. There are a lot of ways you can capture sound. Uh, some people use the boom, some people use the lapel, some people use the um, zoom. My advice is audio is something you can't toy with. So just invest a bit more on audio because once the audio is bad, it's bad. And you don't want a case where you're calling the actors again to come and do voiceovers. The voiceovers will not be as good as they will not carry that emotion, that passion, like you want them to. So make sure that you capture the sounds of three, from three points. Uh, some people use lapel, but lapel has obstructions with, with clothing and hair at times. Um, the boom mic, well, the boom mic, some people, if you have a boom mic that's to capture three or four uh, people speaking at the same time, you could have different levels of sound for the actors in the end, it might not really work out. Except post-production, you now have the, the editor really trying to boost the sound or giving to a sound man to boost, which is going to be more money for you. So what I'll advise is ensure that capture the sound from different points. So whoever has some sort of problem in terms of their audio level or from one point, maybe the zoom mic can pick it up, maybe the lapel mic can pick it up, maybe the boom mic can pick it up.
So one of the questions you may ask is, what sort of experience should I have in the industry for me to be a low-budget film director? Well, you need to have some experience in the industry because if you're just going to walk in and you want to be a low-budget film director, there are a lot of things that you might not understand how the industry works. So you can come in as an actor, you can come in as a cinematographer, come in as an audio person, even a costume person as well. So, but have the experience of how the industry works before you can come in and say, I am a film director. Well, thank you so much for being a part of uh, the class and I hope we've been able to impart a few skills to you in terms of taking your profession, your dreams to the next level. Uh, there's an email at the bottom of the screen. If you need to get in touch with us, please do so. So, wish you the best and take care.